Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to demonstrate the workflow for assigning a moment end plate connection to a beam splice joint within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, I've already created two different beam splice joints within this model. One is a straight beam splice and the other represents an apex situation. Both of these joints have shear and moment reactions imposed upon them that must be resisted through the splice connection. Now in this video, we're gonna be focusing on a moment end plate beam splice connection type, which is a combined connection, meaning that it can resist both shear and moment reactions on a particular joint. Now, when you're ready to start your connection design workflow, you can go directly to the templates area, or you can assign this type of connection to a beam splice using either a basic or smart connection workflow. So let's start with joint number five, which is our straight beam splice, and we're gonna try a basic connection workflow. When you're ready to assign your basic connection to this joint, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the assign icon, and then select basic connections. Now within the basic connection workflow, we have several different beam splice options available for to us with a moment end plate connection type. The first option is you can go with a flush beam splice. It basically means your plate is going to closely match the, the depth of the plates that you have. You can go with one that's extended upwards or extended downwards, depending upon what you're able to accommodate in your detailing. I'm gonna go ahead and select a basic MEP extended downwards beam splice. And RAM connection will complete that process for me by searching through the database of predefined templates. Now, the first thing I'm going to do after assigning my connection type is to take a look in the joint selection area. Here, I'll be able to see the status of my connection design. Now, what I can see from this area is that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0. And the green indicator light is displayed to say that this connection design has passed all code checks and did not yield any errors or warnings during that process. Now, if you'd like some additional information regarding that connection design, or if you'd like to make any changes to it, you can edit those through the connection pad. To access the connection pad, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then tell the program you wanna edit your combined connection. Within the connection pad, you can see that there are several different parameters that you can modify. First of all, you could include a stiffener uh, if you would uh, need to. And if we scroll on down, you can also adjust your end plate geometry and your connections for your end plates and your bolts and so forth. Now, if you'd like some additional information regarding the calculations, you can click on this results icon to bring up your steel connection report. Through this report, we can see all the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. If you would like some additional information regarding the calculations, you can click on the view formulas icon to view all the formulas and variables that were used through this process. The last thing we're gonna take a look at while in the connection pad is the DXF view. Here you'll see that you can customize your DXF and export it for your detailing purposes. Now, if you made any changes, you'd wanna go ahead and save this information in your connection pad. If you're done reviewing your results, you can just close out without saving. Let's move next to joint number six, which is basically an apex situation. I am again gonna go with a moment end plate connection type, and this time I'm gonna go with a smart connection workflow. To start this process, let's click on the design tab in the ribbon toolbar. 
We'll click on the Assign icon and then go to our Smart Connection Workflow. Here I'm looking for a Smart Moment M plate that says Beam Splice on it, and I'm specifically looking for the Beam Splice Apex option. You can see with an Apex option, I can go with a standard Apex or one that extends upwards. Let's go ahead with a Smart MEP Extended Upwards Beam Splice Apex. RAM Connection has optimized the connection design using a Smart Connection Workflow, and I can see the status of my connection design in the Joint Selection area. If I would like some additional information, I can click on the edit icon and then edit my combined connection. Let's go ahead and scroll down. So with an Apex style, you can include your beam stiffeners if you would choose. You can also see that your connector information, your beam side, and your end plate can also be customized. Again, we do have a DXF view, so you can see how this will end up being detailed. At this point, I'm just going to close out of my connection pad, and I kept the default connection as it was. Now, this concludes our workflow for assigning a moment end plate to a beam splice joint within RAM connection standalone for the purposes of resisting both shear and moment reactions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.